I, so I thought I would just share something for those of you who are not so keen on writing. I'm not a huge fan, as you know. Um, let me just share a little bit um, what a new workflow looks like that would involve an integration between Overleaf and VS Code. Um, so on VS Code, you will just go to the extensions and search for the Overleaf a VS Code extension. You install that. And now what you will see is here on the bottom here, you will see um, a um, you will see a, a, a left so the logo for Overleaf appearing. Um, here I'm actually already uh, I'm already logged in, um, but I'll show you how you can do the actual login because when you just install it, it will look like this. It says login with cookies and it asks you for a cookie ID. Um, your browser is authenticated um, with the uh, Overleaf. So what you will do is uh, you open uh, you open the Overleaf page. Um, go to inspect on your browser. Go to the network tab. When you now log in, what it will do is it will redirect you to the main page. And here, uh, um, so let's just re reload it. You now sort of authenticate it, and now the server here um, actually stores or provides you with the the location of your um, of your authentication cookie. Um, so this here. The string here basically tells the server, the Overleaf server, that you're authenticated with this sort of login. So what you need to do is basically copy that cookie and that address and move back to your Overleaf server information here and sort of add that when you try to log in. And now we are logging in. And as you can see, it recognizes my username and a ton of projects. Um, not all of them will ever see the light of day. Um, we can now move to, for example, a project. I just want to show you how this looks like. So open a new window. This is this specific project. Um, and um, <clears throat> this is the main draft. We can compile it. Actually, it's trying to do a compile right now. And it will most likely throw some errors, but it should still actually uh, work. Um, but what's really interesting is if we look at here, for example, um, this is an edit. So I write in bold font in here, I compile. Uh, compile is automatically triggered when you press Command S, which is to save. If you actually look in the Overleaf document uh, here on the browser, you will actually be able to see where my cursor is pretty much even in the main document. So you basically see myself uh, a couple of times and of course, I can make changes in the browser that perfectly syncs into the changes here. So you will have seen there's like one section has disappeared, right? Um, so I've just removed this. Um, a compile is triggered, as I said, when you press Command S. Um, on Overleaf server, there is a hidden folder that you don't see on the uh, on the visual interface where the uh, compiled PDF gets stored. It's called the output folder, the dot output folder. And this is actually where the PDF is. So on the VS code, you can just basically create a two column layout, drag that over, and then you have your compiled PDF and you have the uh, text here on the left hand side, like the actual tech document. So there's actually one more thing you can do, which is quite nice. Um, you can actually get some AI writing assistance. So let's go back to the extensions. Um, write, write assist AI and install that. It's an AI powered text assistant. And now we have sort of incorporated, we've enabled this um, uh, uh, extension. And now I need to remember how this works. Um, so we've got the AI writing assistant uh, installed. We need to basically provide it with an open AI key um, to our ChatGTP uh, subscription, um, because basically otherwise it doesn't know what to, uh, you know, it doesn't know which language model to leverage to, to work with. Um, let me just do some, a simple system calls granularity nine two point two. Um, I can now 
ask the write assistant add-on to expand the selected text. Uh, so here it's not asking you. When you do this, it would ask you then for your OpenAI secret, um, um, which is an API key that you can generate. But you see, um, I've, I've still been authenticated. And so basically it has done the writing for me. Um, it has done, so, so I'm already authenticated. Basically here, this would interact behind the scenes with the um, OpenAI API, and then basically write some text for you. Um, just remove this. Um, okay. Um, anyways, you, you see, I mean, this is the copilot uh, helping helping uh, with some stuff. Let's actually see whether we can actually write something. Um, well, let's move to a different window. Um, to get the OpenAI key, you go to your um, you go to your uh, OpenAI uh, site and basically um, create an create an, you, you can create create a new secret API key. Um, you can attach it to a project, and that is the key that the writing assistant will ask you to provide. Um, and here it has finished with a paragraph that might or might not be accurate. Of course, you should read it, rewrite it, and so on. But actually, what is really nice this way, you can actually write a draft simply by providing a bunch of bullet points um, you know, that summarize it. So think about turning slides into a paper have become, has become quite easy now. Um, I do think, of course, this will change scientific publishing um, massively because basically, you know, this whole blah, blah, blah is not so important anymore. Um, and we can sort of like get straight to the point uh, because oftentimes I think, especially for applied empirical papers, you should be able to read the paper without actually engaging with reading the words. Um, you know, and that's sort of oftentimes I think what people do. So I hope this helpful. This is helpful.